of signals in the first armoured division. And they chatted and they chatted. And finally, um, a couple of years later, he joined the uh, British Army um, in the Roll Call of Signals um, as the first uh, uh, British Armoured Division. Now, don't forget, uh, Signals served in all the tanks, all the assault craft. Um, in the tanks, they were the, they, they looked after communications, but they also, also were the loaders, you see. And so they were truly soldiers. And, uh, and um, Kenneth um, uh, went... Uh, actually, it was at the time of um, uh, when we literally lost the war in Europe, uh, the, the early part. And um, uh, it, it, the first armoured division was sent over, and he was dead within two weeks. We didn't have the armour in those days. Um, the Germans were so far advanced to us, um, um, both in... in uh, well, of course, the French just sat there and felt very satisfied, and I'm not criticising the French, but they thought the Maginot Line would last forever, of course, which didn't, so the Germans went round the Maginot Line. And um, uh, so, uh, uh, my brother's regiment uh, went into... Uh, and he was killed. He was, you would have liked him. He was a very, a, a very good musician. How many of you like music? So I learned to uh, um, fight under Whipper Billy Watson. Do you know who Whipper Billy Watson is? One of the most famous wrestlers in English history. And he wasn't uh, just in England, Charles. He oh, was that was just in Canada, Canada too. Because I was I was fifteen and the Home Guard. I was a soldier at fifteen because we. Um, we carried rifles. Um, we, we were trained as troops at 15 and 16 because of the, the German advance. And I, I um, studied unarmed combat and uh, with Whippy Billy Watson. And he was a wonderful man. And if you do a search on Whippy Billy, he, he was one of the top uh, wrestlers in, in, in British. He came to Canada and so forth. And, uh, so was it unarmed combat you learned from him? Oh, yes. Yeah. The British Army had, had so much, so many problems with the, the German tanks were more efficient. Uh, their whole armour was much better. And um, General Walmsley, Obart, sorry, General Obart. Here he is, here. <laughs> General Obart um, used to be the general in charge of the desert rats. You've heard about the desert rats? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he kept writing home to, I shall write this damn book. He kept, I'm not going to do it, I'm too bored. But, um, but, but um, he kept writing home to the office and, home office and saying, we've got to do A, B, C, D, E, with armor, with, and so forth. They got so fed up with him, they fired him and they brought him home to England and he became a lance corporal in the Home Guard. General Obart became a lance corporal in the Home Guard. Can you imagine it? And of course, the German advance was so dramatically successful, they pulled him back in and he formed the 79th Armoured Division. And th these, the 79th Armoured Division was, were all assault things, all assault, um, assault groups. Um, not a not a division thing. So if if the French demanded um, uh, a special tank advance, we would go and do it. If 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 the if American or whoever did, we would go into our special groups and do it. And if you check up with um, uh, General Omar uh, uh, Obar of the uh, the American beach, you'll find that he said that without the 79th Armored Division, we could not have made the beach. And, and the reason was, we went in with the... Uh, um, the Funnies, Charles? Yes, they were called Funnies, uh, but the, the Boffins, the, uh, what, what's that when you... The, oh, the, the one, Bobbins. The Bobbins. Bobbins. Yeah. We went in with the Bobbins. I don't have a picture of them, I'm Now, a Bobbin was um, a, a tank, a floating sack tank, which had two great arms, and on it was a great big reel of very heavy material, you see, the tanks could not um, drive onto a pebble beach because the pebble just ran out, ran out of it. So air assault groups, um, um, four or five of us, went in. And we didn't last long, but we managed to lay enough bobbins on there that the other tanks could come through. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made the, uh, 
they wouldn't have made it. Uh, the other thing too was um, mines, the flails. You've seen the flails, have you? Here, this yes. is, if, uh, you, if you can't see it from a distance, come and take I, a look, because right at the front here of the tank you can see flails, and these literally spin and land on the mines and explode the mines. And it, does, it doesn't show any of the watercraft attacks. Um, I, know, I know in, in Walcheron, when we went in, went in with Walcheron with, with um, a, a flotilla attack, and the, the damn infantry put a, 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 a piper on front, and he was banging away his pipe as we went into attack, but he didn't last very long. The reaction then, of course, was revolting, but we had other things to do, and so we went on and did it. So the effects then um, were nothing. It's the effects now and the anti-Jewish comments that are going on all over the world and um, uh, whether they're right or wrong or whatever it is. If you can imagine uh, the history of the Jewish community going back thousands of years, it's absolutely amazing they've survived. They, they have a strength and a, uh, they're, they're very wonderful people. Um, but to answer your question, no. The stench and the filth disgusted me. Uh, and so whatever I had to do, we went on and did it. But it's only now that when I look back, and it's, as I said, you, suddenly you, you, you feel this great, oh God. Did you, um, you, know, you, really, you know, when you went in, did you have to help with any no, cleanup or no, anything? No, I was communications. So you were communications. Yes. How, yeah. how thankful were the people that you were liberating? Like you were, how what? How thankful were they? Uh, they were crying. They were, uh, they didn't really know what was happening around them. You see, don't forget, they were dying of starvation. Uh, they, uh, no, no, they, 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 they're kind of eighty percent done. They, they're eighty percent done, gone. And uh, and you, you see, um, if 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 what I, I hadn't didn't have to do this, but if one of your friends, one of your solid friends, was killed and you had to bury him, you just bury him. Um, you dug the hole and you buried him. And, uh, th there's no emotion to this because you've got to do something. But um, there's a story about the Russian troops because um, somehow or another I ended up at a, um, a fuel depot. Um, I don't know why I was sent there, but there were Russian troops there as well. And um, uh, for example, uh, you see. So, so I, le I learned it very, very quickly. A lot of, oh, I've got a lovely story about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we sat around the table, uh, these five Russian guys and, and myself, and um, it was a, a flying bomb fuel depot. And uh, 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 the Russians wanted something to drink because they're very heavy drinkers and we had nothing so one of them said what about the, the fuel the flying bomb fuel this is true <laughs> so they got a pint of this stuff you see I took one sip and oh my god it was horrifying they drank it <laughs> and they all went under the table what I didn't know then and, and I believe it, it, it happened later and I know it happened later because they had talked to us, when they went back, they were sent back to Russia and put in prison because they'd spoken to a, an Englishman or an Ameri American. But, um, uh, no, I remember that. They were, they were awfully nice fellows, awfully nice fellows. And, uh,